that because I'm going through my Elvis thing right now, like pretty hard. But this is how I know I'm growing up is because like these like ministers and like clergy were talking about how he was dangerous. And like, I'm like, they're not wrong. Like, wow. they're actually really not wrong. He really, it strikes me when I listen to him, how there was, there was people like him before that, but not that marketable. And when he was that marketable, that friendly, that soft, that was able to introduce like a whole like different ethos to music. I mean, he obviously ripped off from like the the black community, like, you know, blues culture and all that stuff. He obviously, but like, there's this part, I've only seen the trailer from the Elvis movie where he goes to like a revival, like a Southern Baptist revival. And he gets like the spirit at the revival. And that's like what gave him his like charisma, his charm. And there's this thing about like, um, when he, like, I heard these quotes, like people, like when he walked into a room, you would just like unconsciously turn your head towards him, like without even mm -hmm. realizing it. Like when he was young and beautiful, like mm -hmm. pre Korea Elvis, mm -hmm. he would just walk into a room and people were just like, what's up with this guy? Mm -hmm. And I don't know, like the, the leg shaking thing, the, like the women going absolutely insane. Like, I don't know. I just think there's something to it, but. So um, hi, everyone, and welcome to Royal Path. I am your host, Andrew, and tonight I'm going to ask Father Turbo and Cyprian, what is something that you guys are just objectively bad at doing? You're just not good at it. Uh, math. <laughs> math. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Yes, absolutely. I don't mean to steal your thunder, but in college, I had to go and literally ask, is there a dumber math class I can take? And I was like, yes, there is. I was like, all right, cool. Sign me up for that. But what about you, Cyprian? Draw, drawing. Uh, Dr drawing, it, depicting anything. Yeah, drawing is, forget about it. Can't do it. Oh, right, like the inverse of each other. Yeah, very much so. Very much. I mean, to be fair, um, I never enjoyed math academically, but I can actually, I can do it. Like that's the weird part about it. And especially, especially if I've got a computer and I can write out a program to do things like I can, I can get what I'm trying to do and I can come to it. Right. But like in school, I really disliked math, mm -hmm. really, really disliked it. I don't know whether that's because I had poor teachers or I just wasn't prepared or I was thinking about something else. I don't know, but I'm I just curious. remember not liking it. I, I am curious. Uh, for people who would want to comment, I I wondered if there's a genetic thing there sometimes, because like mm. you know, and like genetic uh, versus nurture, you know, what mm -hmm. I mean, nature nurture. I don't know, because like I got like my wife is good at math, right? Mm -hmm. um, and like I got two, three kids, and like math is not their thing, but they got. You know, they got that creative, just natural creative, not just like um, desire, but aptitude. You know, like I got mm. a couple of kids who have a natural aptitude towards certain creative things, right? Like I have that. I just, you know what I mean? Uh, but then I, I, I see a couple of kids who like they're developing this, like my, my, how old is she? My six year old, she like was banging out like math pages. Mm. yesterday like for fun and i'm like i don't know where that came from it had to come from your mom because that's so i'm curious what people someone out there in in youtube Father, would be able to comment on that for sure do you think it's do you think it's one or the other like do you think that like generally speaking because i'm horrible at math 
it's like another language it really is like algebra mm -hmm. i can do I can do everything up until algebra. I can pretty much, it ends at division. I'm good, actually. I can, I'm pretty good at doing fast multiplication in my head. Mm -hmm. But at division, I stop. Anything beyond that is algebra, but I'm fairly creative. And I would say 80% creative, 20% math. Like, do you think it's that proportionally, like it generally rests? I don't know. I mean, together? I honestly don't know. I honestly know. I mean, it's just, it's all well, they call it like that. That would be like the right brain, left brain sort of dichotomy. I think, I, I think it's got to be heritable. I think there's got to be some, some heritable aspect to that. I don't think it's all nurtured. Like I'm just thinking of my own kids. They love to draw, love to like, that's what like my six-year-old even yesterday, she's like, she's constantly asking for paper to draw. That's what she wants to do. Like in her spare time, she wants to draw, right? That's what she was. She, so she's got all kinds of art supplies and everything she loves to draw. I never am around drawing. Like I don't really draw with them. So they wouldn't have seen me do it. My wife doesn't, but she's, she actually is very, very talented when it comes to depicting anything. Like she can draw like where I'm like, how do you, how do you do this? And from what she says, everyone in her family like she's got painters in her family and the whole nine she's like yeah. no everyone in my family can just draw yeah like we I just mean, can honestly it, it's it's a thing man like my sister yeah. my sister painted my mom painted you know my sister like you know played accordion you know what i mean like mm -hmm. my dad owned records like my cousins were musicians my cousins were like early like la punk scene like in the mm -hmm. um, in the early 70s like early 70s so it's like that's in my genes on that end like i could i can see it you know what i mean um i don't know i don't know my, my kids are also great dancers and they love to dance and i love to dance and i always have loved to dance and i've always been a very good dancer but and my and my wife loves to dance but that one's a little more predictable as like nurture because they're around music all the time sure and we're and we're dancing all the time and we've danced with them since they were little kids you my, know what i mean so, so yeah my daughter does this thing uh little zen yeah she does this thing where um and my wife says i do it too where like when she's listening to a song like really intently she can like see it and like mm. my my wife says i don't do that i don't get that from music like but um I don't know how much that my came from a family of engineers and I can't do like that at all. My dad was an engineer. My uh, aunt is an engineer. Like um, I think there's one more in there somewhere. And I just got, I don't got that for anything. I don't got that. Uh, but seeing music isn't, is part is an engineer's thing. Like that's what's so, that's, what's so interesting. Like if you're somebody who can see music, that is actually coming from the engineering mm -hmm like same part of your brain that in, that an engineer because because that's what you're doing is you're seeing patterns and connections between something and it's becoming like a visual matrix right so it's like could be. Could so be. so programmers the, the thing is like making electronic music guys that i know who are software developers can make sick electronic music even if they can't play an instrument like it's two hmm. totally different things right they they could totally make a, a track with a you know with the digital audio workstation and like all electronic instruments totally could do it with midi and all of that try to get them to play an instrument can't do it can i ask a question though you know a couple of months ago we had talked about how the new dune was like objectively very good like mm -hmm. bravo bravo it mm -hmm. but it missed a soul yeah. do you think that mm -hmm. maybe the engineers that make that sick like electronic music maybe it's missing just soul a little bit and like that's not true of all electronic music like without a doubt there's some really good like soulful electronic music i haven't heard it but i guess i know it's out there somewhere but well, like there's, ton there's tons of it there's tons of it I mean, but I what, I, what i will say that. about the electronic music that is soulful that is particularly soulful in my experience is generally produced by instrumentalists that's what I'm saying. So yeah. technically they can make like really cool, like objectively good music, mm -hmm. but like it's missing something, you mm -hmm. know, like there's just something in there. That's like, I'm not quite sure about, I mean, not, it's good. It's really, really good. Engineering I really, contact with that technical aspect maybe. And that's that engineering mm -hmm. aspect that 
maybe Cyprian's alluding to maybe I don't know I think I think what happens when you when you are so you know I would go to like this is a name people will know because he because he had so many hits like somebody like Avicii right who who like had all of these uh major I mean he he committed suicide but he had all these big number one pop electronic hits and it's like you look at his story and what he said, like he had no musical background, but what he was able to do is like copy what other people were doing very, very well. And so he developed this big toolkit. Like he spent the first two years of his production just copying everybody else at the pop level. So that's sort of like that seeing music thing, right? So he could just mix and match from things and he could make things that had a pop sensibility. Uh -huh. but, I think, but I think that is where you see that there's no soul. Like the soul is something like inspiration. Yeah. Right. And like, that's that comes from a different place. It's not just technically good music. It's not just engineered well. It's not just produced well. You're like, where did that come from? Like I'm listening to something and that could be either electronic. It could be instrumental. It could be singing. It could be whatever. But you know it when you hear it, I guess. And that's why Taskmaster will always lose his fights. Because uh... they're good at copying other people's like you know memorizing instantly their fighting style and be able to use their same weapon but he's always going to lose because he doesn't have the soul he never has mm -hmm. the soul and well it's like i taught you everything you know but i didn't teach you everything i know mm -hmm. hmm. oh yeah i can see that <laughs> i'm going to say this one last thing then we can move on i was i rate last night do you know who the number one most listened to artist on spotify is I don't think you guys will ever be able to guess. Nope, no idea. Cyprian? Uh, I feel like I heard this. I feel like I heard this, but I don't remember it who it is. Me livid. Who is it? Ed Sheeran. Oh, I believe that. That is the number one most list above, uh, I'm above Elvis. Like above, like above, yep. I, I, I'm blanking on names, above every other most important, like this british ginger nothing guy is the number one like well but it goes to the point because he's the epitome of the copycat he's he he basically can do like he, he's basically he's a cover artist for the most part that's what he does he can just he is oh he my is God. he's a cover artist like he can just bop into a pop song and do the archetypical thing of what should be done in a pop song right here that's got just the perfect lowest common denominator pop yeah, sensibility 100%. no creativity no nothing right just nails the like textbook you know he's he's like a studio singer he's who you bring in when you're like well we need to have a number one hit and yeah. it's like it's been written it's been composed the beat's been produced We've got a sick engineer. We've got all of this. We just need somebody who's going to do it just perfectly and not mess it up. They're not going to add anything extra. <laughs> I don't know that many. I don't know an Ed Sheeran fan. Mm -mm. Like, I mean, exculpating from my own anecdotal experience, like how is I just like, I, I, I'll be quiet. Because about the this. songs, they like this. This is what I'm saying, right? Like he's, he, it's, it's the machine. I know it's the machine, but yeah. like, I, I know. But why him? What did he do? Like, what what deals did he make with like what particular like nefarious <laughs> entities did he do to like? Because this guy's in nothing. You couldn't pick him out of a crowd. He's no, but his but but like vocally, he's he's so um, nothing. It's, uh, it's, no. What what's the what's because there we used to have a term for this. He's he's like so unobnoxious. Like there's there's nothing that is that is off or that is like signaturely him. You know what I mean? It's just like he's he's you just plug him in. He's like this perfect cog in a machine. Mm. Just this perfect cog. And you're just like, boop, boop. We need a singer. We've got this whole song because he's never going to write anything. He didn't write. He's he's got no writer credits. You go and you look at stuff. Ed Sheeran's not writing anything. He's I not composing anything. I He's no not idea. producing it. I'm, 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 I don't know. I haven't looked, but I can almost guarantee. Yeah, I don't know. I have no. I idea. can almost guarantee. Yeah. I'm sorry. I just had to talk about that. Like I was livid. Like I was like, oh my gosh, when I found out, and my wife was like, what happened? 
and I was like, okay, I'm sorry. I'm going to dial it back because you, I, you made me think like, I'm probably making you think like Russia dropped the nuke or something like that, but like, no, like Ed Sheeran is just the number one most listened to artist on Spotify. I'm that- trying to think of who would be like an act. Cause there are people like that in other fields, like actors, there are actors that you just like slot into a position. Like I'm thinking like a, people are going to hate me for this, but I think like Ryan Gosling is one of those. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. He's just the guy where you're like, okay, we need a male lead. Who's not going to screw this up. Who's like, who can draw it. But, but nobody's really like, you know who my favorite actor is Ryan Gosling. They like, like if go, people are like, who's your favorite actor? Ryan Gosling. But if people are like Ryan Gosling's in this, they'll be like, oh, it's probably okay. It'll be good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they like go unfreeze him from his like cryogenic chamber and like bring him out and then he does the thing and then they like go refreeze him again. That's basically it. Well, and, and to that point, you know, they're making a Barbie movie. Yeah. Who did they oh, cast as Ken? It. Who did they cast as Ken? That's true. Ryan Gosling. That's true. He's nothing but right. an adult. <laughs> There you go. Yeah. They knew. They they do. They do. <laughs> I was gonna say Paul Rudd, but I think he's I another. Take- he's another one. No, he is definitely another one. But he's got he's got a flavor to him. I mean, I know people get mad at us when we go on and on about pop culture, so I won't <laughs> go on. But like, Paul Rudd definitely has like. I don't know if Ryan Gosling would like. He might. But he wouldn't be good, but he he wouldn't work in the MCU. Like it's no. just inevitability that he will make it in there somewhere because it seems like everyone is in it now. He will, but he's not gonna be like good in it. Like I don't think what he won't be a he won't be a superhero. He'll be like an ancillary character. Maybe yeah. Somebody's assistant or like some government official or like something like that. You Do know you I mean? know? Um have you seen Between Two Ferns? Yeah. Yeah. Did you see the moment? Uh, Father, have you seen Between Two Ferns? I've seen a couple of them. Yeah. There's one with Paul Rudd. And this is uh, after this, I'm done. But uh, Zach Galifianakis is like, oh, so you're a practicing Jew? And Paul Rudd's like, I'm not practicing. practicing. I perfected it. (laughs) And it was just like, that's pretty good, dude. That's pretty funny. Uh, (laughs) But um that's why that's what i'm saying he's got like a little bit of flavor to him yeah. plus he's from kansas city so i can't hate on him too much so Fair enough. Fair he's enough. just a kansas city dude so anyway um today was a busy day for me so it sounds like you guys have a topic and i didn't really get to check out what it is I, at the church as our government i caught yes. that much but it seemed like you guys had some stuff so I'm going to hang back and get a vibe for what you guys are talking about. And then I'll pop in and talk about Star Wars and comic books as I see fit. And then we'll just go yeah. from there. Can I, can I set it up, Father? Yeah, yeah. I- okay. So I was, you, it was something that you said that we didn't really dig into. You, you, you said the church is our government, I think in the, maybe last episode or the episode before. I'm not sure when it was. But it, I was like, ooh, this is something that we need to dig into. And it seemed topical. Because this week there were there was considerable gushing from many in the traditional Catholic and Orthodox online community that struck me about the elections in Italy and the fact that Giorgia Maloney, uh, this right, I guess fair enough to call her right wing. I don't think that that's an insult or anything, but definitely quite right for for Italy. Um, individual is going to be uh, is going to become the uh, prime minister, I guess, due to these parliamentary elections. So I thought that it was interesting. I wanted to bring this up and I wanted to talk about um, and maybe I can just show some examples. I was immediately wary about some things. So there's a couple of things that I was hoping that we could talk about. But in terms of the gushing, just to just to show like what I mean, I prepared couple of things here so and this was just like i'm not i'm not trying to call anybody out specifically but this is just like sort of emblematic of what i was of the things that i was seeing and i saw it from quite a few people so this was a a a tweet from rod dreyer who people will know as the author of uh live not by lies and also the benedict option he's orthodox well-known sort of thought leader followed best-selling author 
And then when she got elected and she gave the speech, a speech that people on the left were calling fa fascism or whatever, this was her like acceptance speech. And he said, my God, this is it. This is the thing. Georgia Maloney is the one we have been waiting for, which seemed like a very weird thing for an Orthodox Christian to say. Especially the one we have been waiting for. He was the one that was warning us because I've read Live Not By Lies. He was so as have I. I loved it. Yeah. I didn't love it, but I really appreciated a lot of the things that he said. But, you know, to be honest, I had this conversation and I won't go on, but I had this conversation with someone uh, early 2021 or something like that about him. And I was like, I feel like he might go a little bit too far to the right sometimes. Like, I feel like that he's a little bit more comfortable over there. So anyway, well, I, I here he, he, he certainly I think he certainly did. Um, in this case, this is what I wanted to share. And maybe I need to stop my share and reshare for this because I need to no audio. Share, sound, share sound and optimize for video clip. But let me, um, let me go ahead and do that. So this was a clip, Radio, Radio Genova, I guess, shared it. But this is a speech, very recent speech from her. And the translation uh, from the Italian of a section of it is, we will defend our identity, God, homeland and family but for those who are watching and not just listening i think the interest most interesting part about this for me or most telling is the expression at the end and so if people haven't seen this i just wanted just for people to take a look at the little expression she gives at the end after saying this so i'll just play it Defenderemo la nostra identità. Defenderemo Dio, patria e famiglia. E fatevene una ragione. that look Dude. right there yeah i don't like that that look right there. Yeah. Um, so what, what struck to me, and, and maybe, Father, maybe this is a good jumping off point. When, and, and, I, and, I ran, and I ran the translation through. That's an accurate translation. When she says, we will defend God, we will defend God, it jumped off to me, and I was like, I don't think we, we worship the same God. Uh, because God's the one defending me. <laughs> like, I, how on earth could I defend my creator? Defend my creator from what? Yeah. So maybe that's a jumping. I don't know, Father. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'll just dive into something real quick. Um, I don't know if it will kind of keep us in a spot. We can move on whenever you think, but or wherever the spirit leads us. Um, this is very much, on the one hand, similar to what was very apparent for most of us. And, and a lot of people forgot this actually. Um, there were people who, and, and I know because I had a few conversations, there were people who saw a glitch in the matrix with Trump. Like there was like, so he, basically here was the timeline, right? So people were like all in, you know, I, I had people who were, you know, I had people on both sides, people who hated Trump, people who loved Trump. And the people who are all in and if you remember there was a couple weird gaps that he made like you know um one corinthians and things like that but like the one major one was like oh i've never asked god for forgiveness what right i remember that and and even um that one gentleman i feel bad for getting his name uh, i did an interview with him you connected me with him real brilliant guy he's the uh he's kind of like the um the intellectuals alex jones uh he, he sounds like him um the girardian guy um oh no why am i why is this happening to me that, I'm so bad. that, that, that why david, am why am i blanketing him name garnowski david, david garnowski david, david garnowski sorry yeah he's so sharp david garnowski is so sharp he's so so sharp so shout out to him. Um, but he made a comment back to me. He's like, well, do you think that maybe he was kind of doing some 3D chess, you know what I mean? 5D chess and just really kind of like doing a parroting of, of the kind of like stereotype that people have. And I was like, no, he, that's, that's not what that was. And like, and I have my reasons why, and I, I'm, I, we can discuss, you know, I, I kind of defend my thesis if you want me to, but like, the point being is, is that gap was one where I would bring that up to people and it gave some people who were authentically like 
you know, Christian, Christian, it, it did give them some pause. It, it was a little glitch in the matrix for them because when you're a Christian, for so like a Christian, if you're a Christian, especially if you're a, if you're an authentically Orthodox Christian, right? Certain things you know just don't fly. Like certain gaps are like <laughs> it's not a gap; it's weird, right? So when you say no, no actual practicing believing God for a Christian would say, "I would never, I've never asked God for forgiveness for anything," right? Do you are you following what I'm saying? It's, yeah, exactly. It's the kind of gap that's made by an unbeliever who's using God as, as a kind of anthropomorphic projection of their of whatever either like base that they're trying to win over or a moral system. Amen. Right? Amen. That's exactly what she did. So when she says we will defend God, now someone who might be in the throw of the spell would be like, no, 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 you're miss, you're 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 being too critical. She's talking about blah, 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 like defending our Christian values, heritage, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. Values, heritage, that's not God. <laughs> like, like, you don't get it. Like, you still don't get it, right? You, you actually, which, you know, perhaps Roger is that guy, which I, he might be, right? You don't actually believe in the living God. Like you, Jordan Peterson, uh, blah, blah, blah. God is just a placeholder projection symbol of a moralistic political worldview. I you. think Peterson has explicitly said that. You, know, you, you see what I'm saying? I but think that, he has explicitly that's... said God is a placeholder. Yeah. So, so that's how that goes down. So that's, that's why when she says that, and, and I don't know, I could be wrong, but I just want to get out ahead of it. I like to do that in real life anyways. It gets me in trouble, but I'm okay with it. Like, uh, I could just see what some of our detractors would say, like, oh, of course you guys always have to kind of, you know, be the contrarians or be whatever. But I'm just like, this isn't really about being contrarian. It's just like seeing it really closely. And, and a little fun little note, and I'm really glad for this, actually. This isn't some weird, like, patting on the back like haha like I told you you were right but I've seen it just the algorithm gave it to me um there's been there's been a couple of these you know evangelical charismatic whatever sites have been picking up on Rygar or whatever his name was Regan whatever the uh, South African guy Re Rian or something like yeah, that yeah, yeah. and I'm super glad I'm super glad oh, are Rian. you talking about the Satanist guy yeah that, South African oh, Satanist okay. yeah um, and I'm only bringing him up because it's like, yeah, like once, yeah, whatever. But once you kind of get past the initial spell and then the initial kind of like infatuation of having your ears tickled, then maybe you can see. And that's all, she, that's what she is. I mean, that's, she, I mean, it, it is this kind of snapshot of what we're, what we're warning about in regards of the, so, using the like correction from the right. So using using maybe um people who should know better using the right coin the right uh phrases the right terms to disregard or to disarm their um uh, discernment to kind of get them emotionally riled up so that they can kind of maybe believe some stuff that they if under the correct circumstances wouldn't be believing it like pointing out saying this is obviously the beginning of maybe maybe a fascist a, a totalitarian authoritarian mm -hmm. uh leader but since since this pull to the left has been so extreme mm -hmm. we're so just like and maybe you know maybe rightly so quote unquote right you know pun intended rightly so are thirsting for someone to come along and correct it you're just looking to the wrong person you're looking oh, to I the mean, wrong this is exactly what we're this is exactly what we've been talking about exclusively yeah. ad nauseum. Like, yeah. <laughs> even so much about the one politician Supreme brought up however many weeks ago about like, I want a monster. And I want, I don't care. I want a monster now. But, you know, I mean that that's I and we under, I understand the sentiment, right? Just like you laid out, Andrew, the left is so crazy, you know, like everyone's tired of seeing, you know, 500 pound transgender you know, drag queens dancing in front of innocent children. People are sick of it. Okay. Um, but that, but what that is 
engendering and fostering is this, I don't care what it's going to take. I just, I'm tired. Of, I'm tired of this disease. So if it means atrocities, so be it. You know what I mean? And it, it's just, that's, that's what's up, you know, and it's, it, people can't hear this right now. Well, there were two, there were two sort of criticisms as I brought this up and just was, was sort of publicly and, and also like privately with people sort of pointing out my red flags about less about, you know, it's an Italian right-leaning politician. It's like, she's going to do what she's going to do, whatever. It's not like there aren't right-leaning politicians all over the world, whatever. But it's More my... Yeah, well, my comment was, or left-leaning politician, or any politician, it's a politician at the end politician. of the day, right? Like, it's a politician doing what politicians do. My reaction was more commenting on seeing people like Rod Dreher and others. I'm not going to name all the names, but let's just say there were there were others, right? Where I was like, hmm, these people seem to be caught up in this mm -hmm. thing in a way that he should know better. Mm -hmm. Like of all the people that should know better, like a guy who wrote a book about how totalitarianism rises and how you deal with it as a Christian, mm -hmm. like of all the people that should know better, that's why. And so it was like, what is going on here? And what was, what was interesting was there were basically two, let's say criticisms or initial responses or whatever. The first one was, well, I want a swing back because, um, then we'll get an opportunity to be in the middle ground, which I found, and, and exactly. And so I want to dig into, I want to dig into that because I think that what it ultimately goes to is those are the people who will be susceptible to that synthesis person, mm. right? Yeah. Th those are the people who will, will be susceptible, susceptible to that, which is the third thing, right? right? But then the other, what I was getting was from the people who were, let's say, supporting the right swing of the pendulum, and this is from Orthodox people, right? We're saying, oh, so you're what? So you're against uh, someone who is uh, pro-family and pro-social and wants the the laws of the government to represent that? And I was like, um, is that does that look like the person who's going to deliver you pro-family and pro-social? Like, I don't. To me, that's not what I'm seeing. If that's what you're seeing, we ha we have a very different judges of character. So, so Father, like. Those were the two responses. I don't know if that, I don't, you know, yeah, I'd love I mean, to expand on that a little bit. Look, look, I've been thinking about, you know, I've been thinking about this as well, because it's like, um, you know, we, we seem to have be we seem to be put on this path where we're where we're trying to articulate something further and further and further right um and i realized that like one of the things that everyone is let, let me digress a little bit like so i was sharing with you earlier today you know i because of um <clears throat> working on this i can argue project i've just been meditating on the apocalypse meditating on the apocalypse meditate on the book of revelation and, and getting to what the fathers teach on it and you know praying and looking at the iconography and, and all the stuff whatever <coughs> and what is so wild to me right is that what we're talking it's like it's like this is what we're doing and i know this is gonna make good TV, whatever. But I'm realizing what we're what we keep trying to articulate here in regards to the role of path, I, I firmly believe it's what you need to have to navigate the, whatever iterations of the Antichrist system that is here and will come. And, and here's why. We've brought this up, maybe and I think tonight's the thing, you know, I've, we've alluded at it. I've and I've alluded at it at, at times when we were real explicit. No one this is the big problem with the right. You're not prepared to lose. Like that's, you're not prepared to lose. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. you don't, you, you really, in, you know, I'm, I'm ready to get at it with some people. Let's, let's, let's set the, <laughs> let's set the comments on fire. Right. Like I, I'm just saying you, you, I'll say it, you know, go ahead and 
throw me out there in the public square, you know, um, you're not, you don't really know the spirit of what you, you don't know the spirit that you're of, like the Lord told the sons of Zebedee. Like you really don't get it. Like you really, really don't get it. Um, you're not prepared to lose because you're going to lose. Like when you look at the saints who persevere in, in, the, in the apocalypse, heck, when you look at the saints of the catacomb church of Russia, they lost. Like, I don't think people, I, I don't think people really appreciate it. Like, God bless Father Peter Hears with all that he's been doing to educate people uh, about this, un this forgotten history and really carrying the torch that Father Sarah from Rose, you know, blessed Sarah from Rose, you know, really late in regards of like getting people to be aware of like, you know, orthodoxy of the heart and suffering orthodoxy. But there's a bit of an inoculation, right? And, and what has happened, I think, is some people, it's like you, they, they're taking bits and pieces of it and not the whole picture. So in other words, they're globbing on to the need to resist. And I'm all about resisting. I am all about resisting, right? I'm all about resisting, especially when it comes to like, you know, anybody trying to blaspheme the, the, the sacrament. We've been talking about that at nauseum the last couple of episodes. But like, at the same time, the tension there is that you have to be ready to lose, like in the, in the earthly sense, right? Because if you know your history, the, the Russian church, the, the true Russian church didn't, shoot its way to victory and be like, we've vanquished our foes. They were decimated. Um, I don't think anyone's hearing me. They experienced like, you know, it's gonna get me in trouble, but they experienced how much more of a um, slaughter than certain other segments of populations, right? Like the millions that were killed, the Orthodox Christians that were killed. For hundreds, hundreds, hundreds of millions. millions. Right? Um, I, I just, it was not a story of like, we're victors in the earthly sense. And this isn't about trying to, I, I don't know what else to say about it in regards of this isn't about anything, just that's the fact, that's the way it's laid out. That's like Christ, Christ came on, on the full of an ass and he was crucified. Like he didn't come, he will, he will come with the white horse with a raiment dipped in blood, yes. But that time is not, not here. It's nigh, but it's not here. And it's not for you to wield. And that's, that's where we get into this chiliasm, this neochiliasm and this people wanting to establish a utopia and a earthly regime in the quote unquote name of God, quote unquote, you know, a Christ, but they don't understand like that they're ultimately trying to usurp it. And it's really, I don't know what else to say. It's like, they're not prepared to lose. And that's, that's the thing, like, if, if you are a Christian, look, if you're an Orthodox Christian and you don't get this, then I'm just saying either A, number one, you haven't been with a, a priest or you don't have godparents that have, like, tried to give you, you know, the tradition as best as they could in English, right? Um, or you just are, you're, you're woefully unaware, you need to figure this, you need to figure something, you need to get somewhere where someone's going to actually teach you and disciple you how to be a disciple of Jesus Christ as an Orthodox Christian and not some weird, you know, live action role player who thinks that he's bringing back the advent of the new Byzantium because like, even if there is some flowering, which, which we are in a weird kind of flowering right now, you know, the Orthodox parishes, right? Uh, are doubling quote unquote across the U S right. Okay. Yeah. We're all seeing that. Um, but even in the midst of all that, that doesn't change anything. We just shot up to like 0.5% of the population. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and if we shoot up to like 
85 percent of the population and then we start saying like okay well let's let's kill the other you know 15 or whatever then we really were never that 85 percent in the first place if that makes sense what i just said you know what i'm saying yes like, that's, not, read, that's not how we roll read a history of the balkans i mean like there's just example after example in the history of the balkans of like people doing just horrendous stuff in the name of quote unquote, the Orthodox church, like in the name of quote unquote Christ. I'm not even talking about just like waging war in general, but like actually like specifically like doing specifically. And, like, and I'm, and, and I'm going to say something. It's going to be, you know, controversial stuff happens. Okay. Cause I, I I'm stuff happens because Andrew's done stuff, I've done stuff, Supremes, we've all done stuff, right? And so if an individual does stuff, we repent. If a nation does stuff, they repent, right? But the, there's a difference between stuff happens and if you've ever been in a street fight or you've ever been in any type of like war or combat zone or, or experience anything even close to that, just so people think like, because I've had someone make a comment, you've got these kind of lofty, high-minded, like morality in these like insights, but in real war, it's like, well, I've been in, I've been to some degree of combat, I've been in live combat zones, I've been in street fights for sure, I've been, you know, all that stuff. I get it. I get it. Let me let me reconcile this here. What I'm talking about is stuff happens. Okay, when you're in the frenzy of it, yes. But that's very different than you're embracing it. You're looking for it. You're not, you know what I mean? They're, they're, that's a very different thing. Because the other side of it, and this is where a lot, a lot of people can get really stuck in kind of a, um, you know, a left perspective is they'll, they'll look at like a church and be like, oh, see, you know, look at the atrocities this church did. And I'm like, well, okay, yes. And it's not to like say, it's not to co-sign it. Stuff does happen, okay? Um, and the fact of the matter is, it's, it's just like the argument of, I can't be a Christian because that, you know, that youth leader molested a child. Well, it's like, that's terrible that that happened. However, you have to recognize that a person making some sort of mistake or an atrocity does not necessarily, it does to some degree, but it doesn't reflect on Christianity and on the church, on Christ in the way that they, they just use that as basically a cop out. Sure. So like, I, I have to kind of acknowledge that because I, I get that, right? Like, but I just want to say stuff happens, you know, like we talked about this a couple, I don't know how long ago, but like with the Iron Guard, it's like, ooh, Iron Guard, like they were fascists. Like, hey, yes, they became fascists. Yes, they got into some anti-Semitism. Yes, that's that's all super bad, not for it. But it had some good, it had some good insights early on. And the Iron Guard kind of proves my point. If you don't guard against this, what we're talking about being kind of taken by the tide of morality and you know, the intoxication of victory. That's what happens. You you end up becoming the thing that you are fighting against. Yes, on both sides. Like both sides. I, I I think there's this uh, this idea of uh, you expressed it so well, there, Father. Of like that was the criticism. The criticism kept coming back. Like, well, then how do you expect us to win? Right. It was like, how do you? Well, then how do you expect us to win? And it's like, no, no, we don't win. <laughs> Like, that's what do you mean? Expect us to win. Like, and that's, I was to a few of them. I was like, you really need to just start reading the lives of the saints. Yeah. Like that's what's, that's what's let me know what it is to be a Christian yeah. is to read the lives of the saints every yes. day. Because if you read the lives they of the saints win. for a week, wow. for a week, you're like, oh, because it's like, and it's not like you can't change the government because there's innumerable saints who through their martyrdom, the governor who was repented. persecuting Christians, not only repented, but became a Christian. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, no, yeah. you want, it's like, no, through their loss, That's right. through their, through them being tortured, through them standing, through, through them, that, Excuse that, me. yeah. Excuse me, forgive me, like, um, 
Metropolitan Amphiloki of Blessed Memory. May God grant paradise. Like, um, there's murals of him all over, like Montenegro and like Serbia and stuff now. And, you know, he, you know, right before he passed away, like he he's the one who, like, like he overturned the, the oppression of the government. It was his prayer and his steadfastness and these marches and these protests. And he did it as a Christian, like he fought the fight. But he, but, but, and he won and the, his winning is the closest that, that you can get while still being a Christian. You know what I mean? He didn't shoot a bullet. He didn't, you know, and I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not a pacifist. I'm not, a, I'm just saying, right. He won a spiritual battle that played out in the, in the political. What he was fighting was a spiritual battle. If you, no one knows what I'm talking about, look up Metropolitan Amphiloki of Serbia and Montenegro and how he fought and how he basically overturned the anti-Christian policies there, okay? Um, and then, you know, he was assassinated by <laughs> people like through COVID. So like, anyways, uh, that's an example. And I'm just saying that because it's like, yes, he's a saint probably, but it's not like, you know, quote unquote, capital T, capital S saint in the Synaxarian or the prologue. This is someone, I, I, you know, I had, I, had the, I had the blessing of meeting him. I have a picture of him and me in my, in my office, right? Like, this isn't, this isn't high-minded, you know, uh, light in the loafers that we're talking about. Like, that guy was a man, you know what I mean? Like, when he, like, there's no mistaking. Right. This is this isn't some abstract thing. This is this is the this is the deep theology. Right. This is the this is the deep spirituality. This is the transformative experience of Christ in the Orthodox Church that we're talking about. This is what it means to, you know, the weapon of peace, man. We are in the shadow of the ex the beast of the exaltation of the cross. And I almost would make you pull up some hymnography. We can just go through the hymnography. I will do it. The Troparian of the Exaltation of the Cross, of the Feast. Uh, the weapon of peace, man. And it's not the peace like, you know, whatever, hate Ashbury peace. That's not what we're talking about. It's, it's my peace I give to you, not peace of the world gives it, do I give it to you, right? The peace of Christ is different, you know? Hey, Father, we should start an Orthodox Christian band called called a Prayer Against the Machine. <laughs> I thought you were going to say Weapon of Peace. I was like, that would be a great name. Weapon. Well, that would be actually cool, but I was trying to make a dumb joke. So, As you were voluntarily raised upon the cross for our sake. Voluntarily, people, right? Grant mercy to those who are called by your name, O Christ God. Make all Orthodox Christians glad by your power, granting them victories over their adversaries by bestowing on them the invincible trophy, your weapon of peace. Our adversaries. And, and again, this isn't a cop-out. Like, maybe this is another, maybe this is an episode where we dive down into the weeds of what this looks like dealing with the principalities and powers. You know, we've talked about naming them and address and like kind of trying to unmask them, but what does it look like to, to deal with them? And I think this is the thing, you know, our adversaries very rarely should we ever understand those truly as like, you know, people with names. If they're all, we'd wrestle them not against flesh and blood. And that's not a cop-out. That's not a cop-out. Like, I have more kids than anyone out there. <laughs> you know mm -hmm. what I mean? I don't, I don't want my kids being subjected to the debauchery and the lunacy exactly. that is being presented, you know, by the left. It's funny. You know how hard this is for people? Um, I, I, it's a little interesting side note. Um, I don't know why I did it, but I, um, I said, Tim cast whatever Tim Tim uh, Tim Pool Tim Pool yeah they did it's really interesting man I they did this show and I caught a little clip of it and I was like 
Oh, this is interesting. They're, they were basically talking about what we were talking about with um, the Power of Music episode, right? We're, and um, what's that cat's name, Scott? Um, mm, about? You remember the, the, there was the, all the people that got killed at the show in, in Houston? Um, Travis. Oh, uh, Travis Scott. Travis Scott. Yeah. So when we did that episode, whatever, but basically they were talking about like, you know, and this is, if anyone doesn't know the show, but it's just like, these people are like Tim Pool and the people there. I mean, they're not, I don't know. They're, they're, they're not anywhere. there. Huh? They're not there. They're, uh, they're, they're, they're modernists. They're of the world. Yeah. I mean, they're liberal Western liberals is what they are. Yes. Yes. And, and materialists for sure. You know? Are you talking about that video with the satanic in, like satanic influence on the music industry? Is mm-hmm. that talking? Okay. Yeah, I sent it yeah, because that one guy was did that whole thing about oh how, the apology for Lucifer and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I was just yeah. like, oh, okay, all right. So, but they're talking about like all this influence, blah blah blah, you know, and and it's basically them being like, it's almost like they could have said, I don't believe in all that stuff, like the devil and God and spiritual and like you know demons, but it is kind of weird that there's obviously something going on with people who believe this stuff, right? That's essentially what it was, you know? And the one guy, and he's like, yeah, you know, Lucifer got a bad rap, but you know, just blood magic. Like he was stuck on blood magic for whatever. I know, he would not let that it was, go. It was really interesting. Uh, but anyways, so point being is, long story short, I just took a link and I dropped it in the comments. No one probably ever clicked on it because like they got millions of whatever views, whatever. But I, I did that just because when I was like, look, you know, check this out. But when I went in there, I saw, <laughs> I saw that someone had made a comment recently and they were kind of like mad. Um, John Doe guy, and he was like, man, he's like, man, you guys are kind of full of it because what well, you think that I'm, um, he totally missed the point. He, there was this whole thing of um, we, he thought that we were saying, that if you are um, upset or or you see the problem with like, let's say, you know, foul hip hop, you know, culture and how that affects people, that you're actually playing into the world of demon. And it's like, no, no, no. Like you have to do both. You have to see that it's foul and what it's doing, but also too, if you get angry and you get tempted to the right and you start getting on this whole like weird tirade they, then you are also kind of falling into the trap, right? Then I gave the example of, it's like a feint, right? It's like boxing. I go like this, I'm not gonna hit you with my right. I want you to actually move to my left so I can hit you with my left and really knock you out. People- and we talk about this in so many different ways throughout. We've been trying to explain. <laughs> We're trying to chop this up for people. It's like, I almost feel like we should just maybe wanna, maybe, I don't know, we should stop talking, pull up some like, boxing and some like MMA fights and be like, see how this works? This is this is exactly what's happening. You know, it's it's this whole trying to get you to move right when really like that's not the thing. So anyways, this is this is really important because I'm seeing more and more like people aren't getting it. And the reason why they're not getting it is because they're caught in their emotions. I'm just not they're they're caught in their emotions and Listen, if you're going to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you got to buckle up, man. It isn't, it isn't like joining the Girl Scouts. It isn't just kind of like here, just follow, like you have to be engaged. Even the Lord said to the apostles, have I been with you so long that you don't understand, right? It's like, there's, there's this space where the Lord calls us. He's like, Paul. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I put away childish things. Like, I would like to think that what we're really trying to do is for those who have ears to hear, to be like, look, y'all, if you can hear us, you got to just wherever you're at. Like, if you're on step number two, you got to come up to step number three. If you're on step number five, you got to come up to step number seven. But like everyone, if you can hear me, like you, like you you've got to be actively working on getting sharper at this because these things like Maroney, whatever her name is, they're coming and, and it's really easy to get swept up in it because if you are like us who, you know, you have kids and you're a Christian, blah, 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 and like you're tired of the insanity, 
you're so thirsty to have someone on your side who's charismatic and powerful and you're so tired of feeling like you're beaten down and you just I want a monster like you know what I mean you're so tired and like we all get it but like that's how it works again I get back to boxing some some styles of some styles of combat boxing is like okay I will let you wear me down. Muhammad Ali has done this in the past. Or people done this past. Rope a dope. The rope a dope. It's, it's the rope a dope. You literally just okay. You you think that you're beating this person up and you're gassing yourself, and then right when you your defenses are negligible, boom, here comes the onslaught. And and, and this is this is so where we're at on so many levels. It's like, you know, COVID's over. So people think that we were talking about this. People think that stuff can't snap back, right? It feels like the left is losing juice and people are like, yeah, we're tired of this. Like, okay, yeah. But like, what's coming from that? You know what I mean? Like there's so many areas now where it feels like the people of God are kind of getting rope-a-doped into some of these things on a lot of levels. It's like, guys, like, you know, again, I I keep repeating myself, but knowing your line, you got to know your line and you got to know what spirit you're of. And like, you know, Read the lines of the saints. You're 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 supposed. We win by losing. <laughs> that that's 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 how we win. I mean the 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 you know when when the gospel say that that our Lord set set his face toward Jerusalem, it's like, yeah, to conquer, yes. But what does that conquest look like? Mm-hmm. Like, what does it end up looking like? And that's what I feel like so many people are missing. That it's like, well, oh, it's time for us to conquer now. Like, look, Maloney, look what happened in Sweden. And it's like, well, yes, but what does that conquest look like? Like, are you sure that you're ready to conquer? Like, like in the way, like trampling down death by death. Like, are you, do do you hear like the method by which that's going to occur? Like, are you ready for that? And I don't think people are ready. We're so annoying. If I can just say that we're just so, because it's like, so it's like this. No, not quite. You're not. It's it is and it isn't. Oh, so it's like, no, it's not really that either. It's kind of like this whole like, hey, father, I got a question real quick. Um, What's with the black and white floors? What's the symbolism behind that? Like, without getting too far off track. But like, I know that's supposed to represent something, but I don't know it's, what it is. It's, I mean, it's it's the brick layer thing. It's but, a brick layer thing. But is there anything deeper it's than duality. that? Duality. It's 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 a, it's duality. It's getting back to like Manichaeism and and dualism. You know, yin and yang stuff. Yeah. Okay. You have to kind of. By the way, Father Peter here's just a really really good basic one on one for for suckers like me who don't know much about the brick layers, but you should check it out because there is some interesting stuff in there. Um, this basic 101 but um so then <clears throat> essentially you're talking about this rope dope strategy about wearing your opponent down um what like is to combat that strategy because i guess we're kind of doing that here is to combat that strategy to just know that the rope dope is happening and like to kind of just roll with it like are you see what I'm saying? Like, what do we do to like kind of counter this? Like, because it's very easy to get caught up, like swept up into this movement of like, yes, it's time for restoration. It's time to get back to where things should be. What do you do to like avoid that? Like love of God, prayer, humility. Sure. Like all that stuff. But what does that look like? It does it like, do you have to have your mind in order to like, to, to see the traps? Does this look like prayer? Does this look like, does this look like, because I mean, I know people who are quote unquote, very prayerful and they're not seeing it. Like they're absolutely, they're not, they're absolutely 100% buying everything that's being sold to them. You know, Putin's the next Hitler orange man needed to go so that we could make way for actual Christian rights. They're quote unquote, very prayerful. They're spending a lot of time. And I guess that's where we get to is like that's that's what I'm asking. What is what does prayerful mean? Because um, you know, right contemplation brings right action. And if and if you're praying correctly, then it, there isn't multiplicities of truth. There isn't like multiples, like this is the thing, right? There isn't like a bunch of Jesuses and a bunch of Holy Spirits and 
like there's one God, right? And so if you, I mean, this is, I, I, if you are submitting yourself to the life of the church, pursuing a life of repentance through praxis, through the ascetical life of the church to whatever degree that's blessed, you're practicing a measure of obedience, you're participating in the sacramental life, um, you have accountability, you know, either through, you know, I mean, that accountability comes in all kinds of ways. You're like, I don't got a good priest. He's a COVIDian. Okay. Do you got a godfather? You know, do you have a wife or a husband? Like you can practice obedience anywhere. St. Paisios, he, he gave himself to be obedient to like a teenage boy at one point in time because he didn't have an elder or Yoranda. So he's like, well, I'll just be obedient to this kid. Right. If you're really serious about it, you can find that place of obedience and you don't got to worry about like, well, I don't want to be led astray. If you really, with, with your heart, say, I want to follow Jesus Christ, the real Jesus Christ, not the Jesus Christ of my making, but like, I want to know who he is and, and you believe and you believe in your heart, then God will provide, we've talked about this so long ago, like Cyprian's living proof on mm -hmm. an island of Saipan. It's like, he got baptized. Like it, it'll happen. Like, and I know it happened because there is a dear brother in Korea who he thought there was no hope and he got baptized. Right. So like, I don't want to hear it. I've seen too many examples. Like if you sincerely want to follow Christ, then you begin to follow and practice the tradition with authenticity and humility. Then that, that type of prayer will begin to open your eyes because here's the thing. There's, we can chop this up so many ways. It's like, um, the lines of the saints show us like, you know, if someone comes and tries to hurt your wife or your daughters, Andrew, I'm going to stop them. I'm going to stop them. I'm not going to let them physically harm your daughter or your wife. I will stop them. Right. But if they come and they're like, Hey, uh, you know, whatever, whatever, you know, I don't know what that would look like, but they're coming for me. And it's clearly like they're, it's because of my faith in Christ. Well then, all right, you know, you can take it. You can take me. And here's why. What's the difference? The difference is when I surrender myself like that, I'm showing them, I'm putting my faith in Christ and I am going to now follow the example of my master. Right. But when it comes to defending your wife or your daughters, I have to do that because God's called me to, to provide and to care. And, and like, as an, as a shepherd, I have to take care of the sheep in that sense right like there's there's a difference mm -hmm. so and the lives of the saints bear that out for us because they're saying to you know where is the line for combat versus martyrdom well that's the line you know if you're if you're laying your life down for your brother there's no greater love right but it but when it comes to yourself then you take up the cross that's a real simple generalized thing but that's kind of what we need to look at because when I hear like people are prayerful, it's like, well, if you're prayerful, being prayerful doesn't mean that you're a wet noodle. Mm -hmm. you know? um, quite the opposite, actually, because prayer is war. Yeah. It's, you know what I mean? Shed blood, gain the spirit, as the fathers say. So, Father Kosmos was talking about, I don't remember, and I'm kicking myself. I have to go back. He's talking about the saint in Greece. <clears throat> There was this like this guy waiting outside a government building, um, waiting to get in. And the saint walked by. Oh, I got to really look this up because I love it so much. But the saint walked by and saw him waiting. He's like, what are you waiting for? He's like, they won't let me in. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, the door's closed. You won't let me in. The saint just walked up and just like kicked it open. Mm. There, now you can get in. Like, I don't know. Like, that's perfect. Like, yeah. for me, it's just like, that's it. Like, that right there is just awesome. So, yeah. But um, because that was a hard transition for me, I, I think one of the things that I was personally afraid of, and um, I know somebody who's in this, this, uh, this spirit of like, um, well, I don't really, it's not really mine to, to cast judgment, you know, like the extreme example would be like, uh, I think the example I've used on this podcast before is what's his name um machine gun kelly and um whoever he's with i can't remember who he's with uh doing uh yeah what's her name 
It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, the two famous. Kind of glad I can't remember. Yeah, it's good. It means we're in a right frame of mind. But um, they are doing like blood rituals with each other uh-huh. to drink yeah. each blood. Yeah. And I said like something. This is not exactly how the conversation went down, but this is the spirit of conversation. Like, oh yeah, that's just straight up wrong. And he's like, well, hold on, we don't we don't judge, you know. We don't, you know, it's not for us to judge. And I kind of was like. This is what I'm talking about. Like Megan but, Fox. Megan Fox. That was her name. The world is a sadder place now because you remember that, Cyprian. But I will say that this conversation happened. And I remember being like, no, that's wrong. That's objectively like that's that's wrong. That's against God's law. And then, he's like, well, yeah, it is. But we don't know where they're at and stuff. I think the temptation, I think what I was personally scared of when I felt that way pre 2020 was is that once I start the well, actually, there is going to be accountability for some people for the actions that they're doing. Where does that stop? Where does it, if I turn on that switch, you know, it's going to start piling out, it's going to start falling out all over the place where I was like, you are wrong, and you are wrong, and you are wrong, and you are wrong. And I can just say, for the one person who's listening to this, that maybe that that is the case, that has not really been the case for me. Really, what happened is it just like completed the picture a little bit of like, oh, okay, there is going to be accountability, but also we do be merciful. Am I, am I lose? Did I lose you guys? Like, I mean, I'm, I'm not succinct. No, like, I, I would just say it kind of, could, it kind of gets to this whole thing I was saying about like, if you're, if you're actually practicing the life. So, in other words, like, there's a real strong possibility you could have gone down that road. But forgive me how this comes off, but like I would have, I would have chastised you as your as your priest, as you should. You know what I mean? Or your or your wife would have chastised. You know what I mean? Like because you're in a community, you know, you're in a community where there is, you know, a, a desire to practice the Orthodox faith with, you know, love and 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 authenticity and humility like there's real accountability like not the whole like hey we're no offense to anyone but it is what it is hey we're evangelicals and we're reading the bible we want the early church and you know we want to count it like you trying to make up your own governance make up your own accountability which is that's what evangelical churches do they make up their own system and they just kind of try to parrot how they read the pauline epistles right but like in the church, there's already a government that's set up. And it works so well that even when you got, you know, weird archbishops that are going off the rails and baptizing like weird things and all that stuff, that account, you, we don't have to despair because we know that the wisdom of the church and the governance of the church and the way the church is set up, because it's set up by Christ, will eventually the law will eventually play out on that does that make sense yes so whenever there's an issue heresy being preached heresy being taught abuses whatever it unfortunately may go on for longer than we'd like and in god's wisdom god's mercy he allows those things. We 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 uh, we we trust in that. We don't know why, but they eventually are dealt with. That's that's the thing that's often missing, is that you you got to be careful about rushing into judgment on certain things, and and part and putting your lot in on something where you don't really know where this is going to land. And someone may say, "Well, isn't that what you're doing?" And I would say to them actually no it's not I'm, I'm actually doing the opposite i'm trying to really avoid that one way or the other because i recognize that like look covid was a chastisement um the the rise of you know the alphabet soup thing and the debauchery and the lunacy it's a chastisement it's a chastisement for a society that has been fundamentally not even godless worse than godless a society that has been, you know, hypocritical and false, right? I think that's worse than godless to some degree. Mm-hmm. Because at least with godlessness, you know where you stand. Mm-hmm. But when people have this weird religious veneer, 
that's what can really trip some people up in a really bad way. And so this is what we've been dealing with a lot of, and so, so like everything we're dealing with is chastisement. It's, it's fruit of, of the way we've been living. And, and I think it's, for me, it's been really easy to lose sight of that. But when I have come to my senses and realized, oh yeah, like it happens every day almost. You know, I live in an area where I'm subject, I'm, su I'm subjected to seeing a lot of crazy stuff. Like and my kids say, my kids see it all the time. We talk about it and I'm like, oh, but then I go like, okay, Lot. Why is Lot righteous? Because he complained about the sin in Sodom. So I'm not a holy man. That's evident to everyone. Okay but at least I can complain about the sin in Sodom. At least, excuse yeah. me, not excuse me, not complain, not complain. I can lament. Complaining's no good. I complain. Complaining's I... no good. I can lament. I can lament over the sin in Sodom. That puts because you know where that, because you know where it's leading. Because I know where it's right? leading. Yeah. And, and I also yeah. know why, I also know when I'm in my right mind, why it's there. It's not there because because the people like right now in our context, right? Like instead of being like um, abstract, it's not there because the people on the left are so powerful. Like this, it's like that, it's the fruit of a lack of repentance, right? And the pendulum swings both ways because of our sin. And God allows the pendulum to swing for our chastisement. Yeah. Because here's the thing people lose sight of. Um, the devil is the God of this world but the devil's not God and God is, God is ultimately in control and God allows, this is, this is so hard for people to hear, but this, I think will help with God's help make something click for somebody out there. God's allowing all of this to happen out of his righteous love and mercy and his wisdom. You notice there's one word I didn't say that everyone thought I was going to say it. And so I said righteous, everyone's mind went to judgment. Yeah. Oh. I didn't say judgment, yeah. right? Right? Why? Because the judgment will come. It's not here yet. I was just talking with my wife about this, how I'm going to keep this very, very vague on purpose. But something happened to a place that used to be very, very heavily associated with our church. And we were driving by it to go get coffee. And I, I looked at it and it was something bad. That, some, that happened to something, a place that was very, very closely associated with our church. And um, I was driving by it and I was talking with my wife and I was like, it's so frustrating for me as an Orthodox Christian, quote unquote, frustrating. It's not really that it would be so easy for me to look and be like, ah, God's judgment. You know, ah, a statement has been made, but that's just not, I can't do that. You like, can't. I just can't because there's the story you that we shouldn't. There's that story of that 13 year old boy that was struck by lightning, like, you know, and then everyone was like, oh, God's judgment. Found out his relics were incorrupt, you know, like he was a saint and many healings occurred over his relics, you know, like, so we're, we should try to be, I mean, the, the story, the one of the, the wisdom from that is don't judge why things, because it's so it would be so easy to be like bad stuff is happening to someone mm -hmm. they must have done something to make god really mad and that's a very easy narrative to believe and spin but like as orthodox we can't believe that like oftentimes it's like the bad stuff happens to god's like people that he's really like treasuring like he's really like i'm i'm keeping the bumpers this close like well, i'm giving you like it's we always we want to interject an either or when it's a both hand yes yeah because god is because because <laughs> here's the other side of it too it's like it's the icon we talked about it's the, you need the left you need the blessing and the long mm -hmm. it's the bumpers it's like it, he's increasing the the yoke to keep you increasingly straight like, you know, like your yoke might be at 75% or whatever, but he needs you at 80 because he needs you going straight. So like he adds another burden, like something to help you like pull even harder, you know? Well, how do you make a diamond? Pressure. And when the apostle says, this is the epistle uh, two days ago, you know, we are hard pressed on every side, but you know, the, the, the whole litany there, it's like, 
this is the thing. If you understand what spirit you're of, whose spirit you're of, excuse me, <coughs> lives of the saints, the apostles, right? Christ, our master. Then you begin to see like, like if you want to be orthodox, if you really want to be like actually like orthodox, like it's not really about reading X, Y, and Z. It's like, do you embrace the cross? Do you embrace the temptations and the sufferings that come upon you? Because that's the means of that's the means of your salvation. That's how you're transfigured, right? And this is this is essentially why I don't know. Some people I don't know. Maybe we're getting old. I don't know. Maybe maybe this is getting redundant. But you know, for right now, this is the thing because um, it, it's just going to keep increasing. Because now what we're seeing is we're, we're going to start seeing more more leaders who are articulating the simmering rage that's been underneath. And they're gonna start articulating it more and more in such a way that it's gonna galvanize people and pull them from the bleachers, if you will. Um, and that's, and, and here's the thing, and we're not done yet because that's just, again, that's, that's the trick because the synthesis, it's like, we don't, we haven't even really got a chance to talk about the synthesis much because I feel like people are still struggling with this idea about the extremes and being pulled to the left or to the right. And like, you know, the, the thing is, is the synthesis that comes from it. I, I mean, we don't, we haven't been able to talk about it enough because this pull to the right is such a gnarly thing, but that's, that is what's really in the wings coming. The synthesis, I mean, we can talk about it on so on such low level, like we don't even have to get esoteric about it, you know. Um, I could tell you how you're being programmed right now, like um, what is it, uh, uh, Fox, right? Fox News, right? So like Fox News, okay, you know my man Tucker, <laughs> okay, you know what I mean. Tucker gets on there and like, you know, Tucker gives his points. People are like, yeah, Tuck, give it to him, whatever. And, uh, you know, I haven't got a chance to see it. I definitely want to see it, you know, um, and God bless him. You know, I guess he did some kind of like thing and Father Josiah Trenum's on there, which is great. Oh, like, God yeah. bless him. You know what I mean? God bless him. That's great. But I just want to say this to everyone, right? Um, God bless Father Josiah. You know, he's he's been a, he's been a great excuse me, example of a, of a of orthodox, you know, leader, big, but, big but, but Fox News does, has been doing these, these really quaint exposés on teen trans, transgender kids and making them, putting them off as heroes. Look how brave they are. Here's his expose. Do you see what I'm saying? What, how, how is that working? How is that working? How is it that you'll get Fox will make, you know, all this uproar on the whole spectrum, Megan Fox to follow your side. I have all these people speaking out on traditional family values, this and that, but yet you're doing exposés. Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Have you seen these? No. Where they, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they're starting to slip in these pieces, these inspirational pieces on transgender kids who like are transitioning as teenagers, like painting it as heroic. Okay. Now Fox News is doing this. Fox News. Wow. Fox News. And it's it's slipped under the radar. But you look at it, like you can pull it up right now. You can find it. But people I'm gonna go on a little search right now. Yeah, right. It, it's it's slipping under the radar. And and I'm just I'm just showing you because I know there's I'm sure and I'm sure there's someone who's like tuning out because they're they're sick of hearing us. And me specifically talking about this abstract thing of the temptation from the right and all this that, but I'm telling you, right, that's part of the way you get worn down because you're so used to clickbaity, you're so used to needing the the big the, the the hit, and it's these things are starting to get slowly fed into you. Where Fox News is doing these pieces on like, yeah, you know, and it's slowly going to come because that's the synthesis. I'm going to give you another proof, okay, that thing, Caitlyn Jenner, right, running as, yeah, yeah. 
Pride Month continues as we highlight the story of Rylan Whittington, whose journey of transitioning at age five has been seen by seven million people in a family YouTube video. Ryan Yenis has a story about that family that hopes you ain't lying, father. Can help others. Watch here. If you saw me walking down the street, you wouldn't think anything different. 14 year old Rylan Whittington is a typical Southern California teenager. And the Whittingtons, along with mom Hillary, dad Jeff, and sister Brindley, are a typical family. The only difference, though, in Ryland's eyes, is what this family can mean to the tens of thousands of kids under 18 who identify as transgender. We put our story out there so people could see that, like, there's another family out there that is going through what we're going through, or there's another family who's proud of who they are. Before Ryland could even speak, managed to tell his parents that he is a boy. I could just see it. It wasn't him trying to be a brat. It was like painful. It was truly painful for him to have to wear feminine clothing and. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say. Can we? Before tell he could. Before he could speak. Before he, he could. Told speak. them that he was a boy. And it was the mom, by yeah, the so, way. So let me just get bruh, out ahead. Of this. Bruh, it's Fox let's, News. Uh, you're absolutely right, father. This. Like, <laughs> let me get out ahead of this, okay? Because like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna. I've said this before, and, and apparently, you know, bravo for us, I guess, for putting out too much content to being too quick because we have to go, I have to go back and say like, look, okay, um, this is part of the thing because I'm not saying get the torches, get the pitchforks, go, go get the trannies. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that, right? So let's just be clear because there's some people I think who may think like, oh, blah, blah, blah. It's not what I'm saying. Right. It's like, OK, like, in fact, there is there is a real need for being able to minister to people who are caught in this confusion. Right. They need the love of Jesus Christ. They need the order of the church. They need repentance. They need repentance just like the rest of us. So just so we're clear, take that sound bite, and whoever's mad and turns things off, you take that sound bite and give it to them. Because Father, Father, forgive me. Father, forgive me. I. I, I, this is this is like so super important because there are there are this has been a criticism when I when I will talk about these things and this is coming from Orthodox people where they will be like, you know, my criticism to somebody being like, there needs to be a law against this. We need to make this illegal or whatever. And I say, wait, 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 wait. Like, I, I think our orientation is a bit off here. I think we're pointed yeah. at the wrong thing because like. Yeah. And then they'll say to me, like, well, what are you saying? It should be illegal. Is it better that it's legal or or yeah. illegal? Isn't it better if we it's made illegal? And I'm like, listen, listen, listen. I'm not saying it's about it's illegal or legal either way. I'm saying the issue here is repentance. Yeah. <laughs> like the, the issue here is the here's a human being who needs to be saved. Right. That like here's the person that needs to be saved like as we all need to be saved as we all need to be saved. not needs to be made a criminal needs to be saved and here's the thing shall we shall we have another kind of like meta of the royal path right like not only do they need to be saved but they also don't need to be pushed further into their delusion and applauded like they're a hero getting me back to what i was saying about Caitlyn jenner you know what i mean and Caitlyn Jenner being the woman of the year and Caitlyn Jenner being lauded as this brave thing and like all stuff. It's like, no, that's lunacy. I don't need to sit here and be like, we should line them all up and, you know, and, you know, pull a no country for old men on them. Like, I'm not, I'm not saying that, but at the same token, like, we cannot, we can't celebrate something that's clearly out of order and, and, and you know, there's, there's, there's illness, right? So, and, and father, if I may, sorry, forgive me. Yeah, please. The same, the same Caitlyn Jenner who, while all of this was going on, literally killed somebody, and had no repercussions happen. Oh, what do you mean? I don't know about this at all. See, see, huh? was was driving along, texting, hit somebody, they died, and there was no. I didn't hear no... this. This is, and that's how crazy it is, right? Man. Like, and it was while all of that was going on. Of course. Oh, but here I'll pull it up. Jenner. So while you're pulling that up, let me just let me just close the loop on this box thing. So like, it's being fed to people slowly. That's the synthesis. Because what's going to happen is 
You're going to get people who are moralistic. I'm a Christian, blah, blah, blah. Like, yeah, I'm a Christian, but I'm not like those people. I'm not like those, you know, Trumpers or, you know, whatever, whatever the pejorative of it is, is going to be, um, which means like, hey, you know, live and let live. I don't really care, you know. People are into like, you know, little boys or people are into trans. Like, I don't really care. Right. Wow. And, like, we, we can't do that. Wow. That's wild. Caitlyn Jenner won't be charged with manslaughter in fatal crash. Los Angeles District Attorney's Office has decided not to file vehicular manslaughter against Caitlyn Jenner in the Malibu car crash that left one person dead earlier this year. That's wild. Yep. Yep. Wow. I rear yeah. rear end of the car, pushed it into into traffic, and another car hit it and somebody died. N talk about no repentance. You never even heard this mention. Never mind this incredibly famous person ever like getting on TV and being like, I had a part in regardless of anything. It's like, yo, you hit somebody's car. You were driving a car, you hit okay. somebody's car, because you hit their car, they died, and you say nothing. He, and you're the woman of the year. He was probably, yes, he was probably the Hummer, right? Then? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Wow. Driving a Hummer, nonetheless. That's wild, Hummer. man. That's wild. Like, No, see, I think it's a, it's a G-Wagon, I think. It's a Mercedes G-Wagon, anyway, which is like way more expensive. It, like, it... The reality is, is like, this is how corrupt, man. Can I corrupt. totally, man. There's something I wanted to say um, about applauding the sick. Uh, I don't really like him that much. And I think he's way off on a bunch of stuff. But Bill Burr occasionally nails it. Vis-a-vis, um, -vis, like, he's really good at um, feminism stuff. Like uh, one of my favorites that he did was like he was standing on stage and he's like, one day we're going to have a woman president. And everyone started applauding. He's like, shut up. You don't even know what her platform is. She could be a Nazi. This person I'm talking about right now, she could be a Nazi. And the fact that she's a woman is enough for you guys to applaud for her. And like, That's it. yeah, and that was good. But then another one is he's talking about overweight people being applauded for overweight for being overweight. Look, I, that's not what I'm talking about. I, I don't think that like people should like, again, are we wanting to turn like overweight people into criminals by ridiculing and shaming them all the time? No, that's not what I'm about. But he makes a really good point because he's talking about all these like 500 pound women being praised like, yes, you're a queen. Look at you. You're magnificent. Don't lose a yes, pound. queen. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. And he's like, it's equivalent to walking up to a drunk laying face down the street in his puke. And being like, yes, yes, you are living it. You're living your best life, dude. Live your journey mm -hmm. to the best that you can. And I was like, that's so poignant. It's so like, it. like I said, I don't agree with him about a lot of stuff, but occasionally he really nails it. And again, walking that royal path, it's not like the alternative, the alternative of what he's criticizing is to go on and immediately start being like, all right, fatty, here's a deal. We're going to start doing 10 sit-ups and 10 push-ups every single day. You're off all carbs. You're now keto. You're going to do intermittent fasting. We're getting you down. Well, that's the first page of 1984, right? Where they're forcing everybody to exercise in front of the screens. Oh, that's but I, I think the, the, the prime example of this is a Lizzo. You know, Lizzo, yeah. the oh, rapper, thing, singer, like whatever. Last, the last two days, right? Like, isn't that like... I don't know, but she's constantly showing up in these like sheer outfits where you could see everything, every part of her body. And it's like, and then the media will be like, Lizzo, brave and beautiful and sexy outfit. That and it's like, okay, but the key for me is, look, actually there's a problem going on for her here because even if she had the, the body of like a goddess, even if she was like a professional bodybuilder, like, she shouldn't be showing up in public wearing basically nothing. Yeah. Like there's she's an issue. There's an issue there. She's still being like, yeah, it's it's yeah. immodesty. It's just it's immodest. Yeah, it's, right. It doesn't matter <laughs> and, what the shape of your body is. Do whatever no. you know. But it, it's just like 
yeah, this whole like glorification of like a fetish, essentially. But but the thing is, if she did have that body of a goddess, those same outlets would not be celebrating her showing up in a sheer something. Oh, they'd they be would. like, oh, who did they would not? No, they would they be like, would oh, who do who do you who do you think? I who see does it. Think she I see is? it all the time. I see it all the time. Uh, pick celebrity, beautiful celebrity X mm. shows up, uh, uh, shows shares Instagram birthday story wearing sheer like right you know dua, like, dua lipa is the one that they love for some reason know yeah. who that is. i don't even know who she because is by but the she's way she's all over the news <laughs> he's number one on spotify for women ed sheeran wow. is number one for men she is i don't need i don't even know who this lady is so the thing is the, the thing what's coming through all this too is that the spectacle Spe- society the spectacle yep the spectacle right and and the demonic thrives and and multiplies and communicates and moves through the spectacle right and so and even and even this is the thing I, w- I would bring this forward you know the spectacle of the strong um leader of the right there's a spectacle that's there right this is something that you can't miss um and it i mean from my, I would just say, if you know, if you're honing yourself correctly, you can begin to um, see the spectacle as kind of like a tool for discernment, mm-hmm. right? Because, I, I mean, I'll tell you what, Pedro Pofidier, when you look at his, you know, speech on defending the family and tradition and all those things, the tone couldn't be further indifferent with, from um, Maloney, Maroney, uh, whatever. Yeah, like yeah, because it's never it never names anything. It's just like nope, this is the way it's this is this is the way God ordered things. It's so the whole tone of this prayer, uh, Patriarch Porfirio um, put out a prayer against the alphabet soup, blah 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 blah. Like, but it's never like. It's so well written. It's just like ordering God's creation. It's basically like this is how God created things. It's not like it's not like he did not create, you know, the the transvestite. He did, it wasn't anything. It was like he created man and woman. It was just naming things the way that they are. It doesn't incite the passions. It it doesn't incite the passion. Her speech incites the passions. Roger. That comment, that's a man caught in his passion. Yeah. To some degree, it, it, it'll keep that trajectory will, will keep going. You know, and like, yeah, I mean, I don't, I, I, I am sure that there's like, okay, you're just pie in the sky on stuff. I'm telling you, you know, it, it, it's not. And I think that's, I think that's one of the reasons why that default of just like, um, there was that, there was that, um, when you were trying to, I don't know if you're still going to do that, but, you know, bring questions at the end. And there was a gentleman who, um, had a question, um, and he was talking about like libertarianism being compatible with orthodoxy. And like, I think that's kind of one of those areas where there's, where a lot of libertarians start seeing orthodoxy, their eyes open to it because a libertarian understands like the third option, quote unquote. Right? It's not left or right, but there's a third option, right? So you can kind of see that with orthodoxy. But look, look at that first line. Look at that first line. Yes. But, as, so, but we, we speak as Christians, and that's why we underline, we add that we are against any kind of violence, hatred, contempt, persecution, and branding. And those who share these ideas, especially the violence is done in the name of church and Christ. Like, that's it right there. Like, that's that that summarizes or less like kind of like what we're talking about like he writes this prayer he writes this prayer basically like ordering the universe uh, not not inciting the passions while glorifying god continually speaking on god's goodness and the way that god's creation is good but in no way like nobody could like if you get up at like a a a, a rally an anti-alphabet soup rally or whatever and you read this prayer it calms everybody down. It like calms everybody down if they're if they're mm-hmm. if they're locked into it. 
you know, like it doesn't like fire anybody up. It, it's like it, it brings people to a place of peace. I, I don't know. It's just it's fantastic the way that it that that's the thing I want. That's what I want to keep following. Like that passionless, like the the way to speak on it in a way of like, well, you know, no, it's not right, but we don't go out and find these people and stick them on an island and then nuke the island. We don't do that. That's just like nothing about that is good either. He's, he, I think there's, it's important, like, because I've also been thinking a lot about this and seeing it as, uh oh, there goes my connection. Can you guys still hear me? Okay. We can hear. Okay. So, but no, I think the second part about like, um, so much of, so much, and like the thing with Maloney, you know, in Italy and the thing with Trump and the thing with DeSantis and all of that is it's all reactionary. Mm -hmm. It's all a re it's all a reaction, which says, and this is even Patriarch Porfirio is saying like the church is not waging a crusade. You know, he, he said, who's, who's leading the crusade. Others came to our house and propagate their ideas to us and pose them. They want to tell us what we should be and, and what we, what we should be and, what we should be and what we should be in this story. We are the ones who are exposed to violence. They force our minds. They're raping our soul. They would like to, but they won't be able to. And it's like, yeah, tradition. You can't be both traditional is, and reactionary. The two is, can't go together. That is so important that the, they force our minds. They are raping our soul. Like that mm -hmm. is so important because even if you are not allowing yourself to believe the things that they're projecting, but you do it in a way that incites violence, they're still winning. Like mm -hmm. the personalities are still winning. They're still raping your soul. Like they still are eating your lunch. Like they still like when you go to pray and like, I'm speaking from personal experience here, when you go to pray and you cannot stop being angry at the left, like your soul is getting raped. Like you, you are trying to fight it off, but like, the thoughts just keep coming in like they're still winning or they're attempting to win, mm -hmm. you know? And so like it, it's that whole, we've talked about the, the mechanism, the, the device, the, the, the uh, logistical device that keeps us running through. And as long as we're on the, the device, you know, we're, we're still losing. I'm talking a lot. I'm sorry. I, I th I'm, well, well, I think there's, there's even, I mean, this is, this is like a great juxtaposition against Maloney and her like, because one of the things she said, you know, she said, we will defend our identity. You know, this idea of like this fight, like there's a yeah. fight we're going to, because even here he's saying, we're not waging a crusade. What are you talking about? There's no crusade, which is right. It's like, no, no, no. And, and here, uh, Patriarch Porfirio, he says, our public morality was formed on that value system, talking about the Christian value system. With that value system, we build relationships amongst our, among ourselves, but also with others and those who are different. In a word, we build and nurture who we are, nurture and nurture our identity. It is the Orthodox and Christian identity and the evangelical system of values, which is a completely different idea and has a totally different feel from we are, we are defending. It's like, we're not, def it's not like there's this defense and there's this wall and we're soldiers on it. It's we're nurturing and building this within the individual, within the man, right? We're nurturing and building it. And then if it's nurtured and built and it's inside of you, what is yeah. the, where's the, what, where's the idea of defense? Like, where's, like, who are we fighting? Well, it's the thing like, is one plays on the narrative of the hero mm -hmm. uh, from the air, from the perspective of Lucifer. And the other one plays on the narrative of the hero, the true hero, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, Father, you said a while ago, it's the difference between how the East and the West handle like demonic possessions. Like, uh, like the West has this, like from Hollywood or whatever, has this idea of chaining them up, forcing prayers on them. And the East has this whole thing of like, no, we love them. We work with them. We, we, you know, it's like a hospital. We give them a bed. We, we feed them. We, you know, we pray for them and we work with them. You know, it's just like the difference between the two things. And I mean, I'm sorry, I know I'm talking a lot, but I am a little bit fired up right now in a passionless way, but like, uh, you know, it's like it's this whole idea of like, where is, are you doing this out of love? Are you, how do you see sin? Is this a moral failing that needs to be eradicated and corrected? Or is this a sickness which needs to be cured? Exactly. Well, one is about, well, one is about do you feel threatened? Or are you loving? Yeah. Are you, are you directing your action of being towards the love of the other person? 
or are you feeling threatened? Right? Because everything that Christ is trying to do, everything that the Holy Spirit is leading us into through the life of the church is about, you know, this, it's getting back to that kenosis, that proper, that not the inverted weird kenosis, but the true kenosis, this emptying of self, right? Because in that kenosis, there's no fear. Perfect love casts out fear, right? <laughs> Perfect love casts out fear. And so it isn't about trying to undo and do away with whatever. It's like, look, and I just keep going there because I know, you know, I, I need to do better. And in the heat of conversation, you know, maybe some things are said with, with lacking the tact that they should. And I, I honestly apologize for that, you know, but um, b- before, because this is, this is my opinion, this is my experience and my perspective, but definitely the last five to 10 years, definitely five years for sure, the experience and the rise of the number of people who I've encountered that are suffering from disorder and deviation, it's mimetic. Mm -hmm. I don't, you're not going to convince me otherwise. Right. Um, And the reason why I say that is because prior to that, years and years and years of experience of people who suffer from the same thing, but it was so different. You know what I mean? It's like, Oh, you're actually suffering under something and from something. Mimetic. I'm sorry, again, what does mimetic mean? Sorry, Father. Um, it's the idea, right? No. Like, the imitation of. Yeah, so, Copy, copying copy. something else. Right? Okay, sorry. I'd be remiss if I didn't ask. Sorry. No, no, it's good, you know? Um, and and that, that's like the difference, right? Because in that quote that Patriarch Porfirio is saying, it's like, I tell you what that looks like. Every Serbian family, every family has had maybe the quote unquote gay uncle or the quote unquote, right? And you just, you, you loved them. You know what I mean? You love them, whatever. Um, everyone's had that experience. That's so far removed from what we're dealing with now and the over the top and the, the raping, the forcing upon you, the trying to make what is not healthy, normal and ordered. I'm sorry, you know? making that the normal and making that acceptable, right? There's a difference between the accepting of something in the same way we all have aberrations or maybe someone's, we live in a fallen world, right? So the accepting of the strange, the accepting of the different, that's something as Christians we're taught to do. But there's a difference between the accepting and the applauding right because the applauding is not the love of that other it's actually exactly yeah it's an objectification of it right and and, you know i've said this to people before and i know just the white supremacy racial supremacy white supremacy black supremacy whatever whatever supremacy flavor you got and homosexuality in the sense that it's promoted as a acceptable and to some degree preferred you know sexual identity they're both cut from the same cloth they're both the same type of disorder because it's taking identity into an idolatrous level it's taking do you, do you understand what i'm saying like they <laughs> the the exaltation of the self right to this unhealthy degree it presents this idolatrous experience in a sexual sense it's homosexuality in a you know um racial or quote unquote ethnic sense, it becomes this, um, uh, you know, racism actually, you know what I mean? That's what it looks like because it's, because it's not the love of, of, of one's people or culture, it's the denigration of the other, that's the problem, right? That's the field so, yes. going. And so yes. it's, it's, you end up looking at yourself as a, it's, it's a weird invert, it's a, we- it's a weird turning in on oneself as you know, in an idolatrous way. It's the same thing, right? Man and woman are complementary, right? That's not just about the fact that it, you know, it's life giving because that's, you know, there's a lesson that God is showing us there, right? The, the, other, the other is not life giving. That's just, that's nature, that's fact. 
and it, and it's it's teaching us something. The fact that it isn't life giving teaches you something. It teaches you something about your own self. And when you turn in on your own self, that's why the church, the term for masturbation, the sin of masturbation is called self abuse. That's what the church calls it. Meditate on that. Right? So the wisdom of the church shows us proper order and it shows us how to bring these things that are out of order back into order and when you look at the canons and you look at how the canons deal with homosexual acts because there wasn't homosexuals or homose you know what i mean there's homosexual acts but not homosexuals no, right there's there's right and so you know that gets father forget, for, forgive me that is such a big distinction yeah. It's so big, but I mean, it's it's big, not just if we're talking about just homosexuality, but if like on every level, yeah. right? And it's just like people taking this behavior that they are engaging in, mm -hmm. some of whom don't want to be engaging in that behavior mm -hmm. and turning it into their identity. identity. Yeah, yeah, it, it's... And, and Father, I must say, forgive me, like, when I was in my downward spiral in my life, it's because I had done that. Yeah, I had fully said, this is my identity. This is what I did. And it was being backed up because like, oh, they're filming a TV show and saying, this is your identity. And I'm getting to watch it back on the screen, yeah. right? That this is, oh yeah, I wake up at noon and go and start drinking. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I'm running around with all of these women all the time. And it's like, I, that became... I had elevated that to the point where I was a slave to that. I listen, had to do it. Listen, I, I'm I'm sorry. Like, hey, I could stand to use, I could stand to lose a couple pounds myself. You know what I mean? You know, my my daughter, God bless her, she's becoming quite the baker. You know what I mean? Oh, no. It's it's a problem. Yeah. That's brutal. That's brutal. Yeah. But uh, you know, what's her name? Lizzo? Lizard? What's her name? Lizzo. Lizzo, uh, yeah. Look, Lizzo, um, what was the name? Fall into the Glitter, whatever that guy's name was. Gary, whatever, like. Uh, Gary Glitter? Not Gary Glitter, um, although he's one of them. He's terrible. Yeah. Um, fall into the Glitter, Adam Levine, Adam something. He was the guy who took the place of um, Freddie Mercury. Oh. Was, um, oh, wow. I forgot about him. Adam. Yeah, yeah. Whoever that guy is. Yeah. I just bring him up because I'm just trying to think of an openly homosexual guy, but people are like applauding, whatever. But like Lizzo, Lizard, that guy, whatever. I mean, it's all the same thing. People are embodying these passions. They're and they're they're embodying them. And and that, that's why it's demonic. It's like, okay, you're gonna be my vessel, Lizzo. You're gonna be the vessel for gluttony and for lust. Okay, you know, Adam, whatever fall into the glitter guy you're gonna be my you know you're gonna you're gonna manifest lust and you know whatever you know sodomy you know you know you see what i'm saying like yes like, because remember passion we, the person becomes passive their their personhood is now subsiding to the the passion the passion comes forward and the, the passion is acting and you, you know what i'm saying anger right like um, we could uh, we could pick a guy that re represents anger. You know what I mean? And and this is this BMX. Is, you know, this is the thing. This is the thing. And I think when we this is why Orthodox Christianity is so profound, because yes, it's the truth. But when you begin to wield it properly, as the fathers teach us, man, everything becomes so simple. Mm -hmm. And that's the trick. The world, one of the big things, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be talking a lot about over the next probably couple of months is just keep coming back to this is, is complexity versus simplicity, because the root of mental illness really finds itself in complexity, right? If you want to, if for a person to be healed from mental illness, they need to move increasingly to a, a measure of, of, of simplicity in regards of personhood and ordering, right? complexity is always a sign and a symptom of mental illness it's yes. one of the first initial oh ones right gosh. 
Well, it's also it's also Gnosticism, right? Gnosticism is this increasingly it's complex crazy, system. Crazy yeah, complexity, increasing complexity. We are in a Gnostic culture, the increasing complexity of multi multiplicity and ever growing, exponentially growing um, gender and identity and complexity. Right? It's a, it's a sign. Conversely, the angels, right? When you read Dionysius, the Areopagite, Maximus, the divine is simple. There's simplicity that's there. That's that's profound, but it's it's, and we can get into a whole thing about that because we we're not talking about crudeness, we're not talking about something being primitive. We're talking about divine simplicity, right? Elegance, and right? There's elegance. elegance. There's an elegance. elegance. So, this thing of complexity, it, it it's really a thing, and and, you know, you you see where the demonic will try to get people to mimic, that kind of simplicity at first, right? Um, but it, but that it's a mimic because it leads to a, a type of complexity. It doesn't grow in that simplicity. It leads to because the falseness of it is inherently revealed in the complexity. I.e., um, you know, the homosexual act or the homosexual identity begins to now be the gateway to an infinite amount of gender identification. That's how it worked. Got to add more letters. Got to keep adding letters. Yeah. Add more letters, right? Lizard cannot be simply, you know, body positivity. She's going to move into something else if if people keep up with her. You know what oh, I mean? Has. That's her whole thing is posing nude for everything. Like, that's her whole thing is just like, it's not about body positivity. It's about, it's a fetish. It's for all the people who are just kind of like, um, this sounds really harsh and I don't mean it to be, but it's, it appeals to a person who's into overweight women you know it's, it's well a, the bb the bbw fetish is that that's a thing yeah i don't, I like, don't know that's a real that, a big beautiful is, big beautiful women that's a oh, that's a thing okay. but, but but the 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 biggest thing that i want to point out though it's going to move to something else oh something be, okay it, it will it will become being it becomes increasingly complex you see this again with um you know we all know it's a, a big thing, but I'm just gonna say it's it's more pernicious and dangerous than people really want to talk about porn addiction. Mm. Right? You don't the, forgive me, you know this isn't the episode for your to be listening around your you know your kids whatever, but like you don't no one stays at the quote unquote playboy your dad's playboy. Like if you stick with it, you get increasingly more deviant deviant. And yeah. well, it's, a, it's a desensitization, you right? Desensitize. It's a desensitization, yeah. And that deviation, by the way, becomes is it's going to be characterized by a complexity. I guarantee it. Yeah. It, what's what I believe that the the meme is like something like Rule Thirty Four or something like that. There's this meme Rule Thirty Four. It says if you can think of it, there's you can find porn of it. Yeah. It's like this meme. So which tells you like, oh well, that means because that means not only is somebody be becoming into it mm -hmm. but like before they even became into it somebody was so into it that they actually produced it celebrated it celebrated it celebrated it, it. and this <laughs> this is this is again getting back to it like we're just trying to always come back to uncovering it right it's 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 demonic because this yeah. the, you know it's demonic because the celebration of it the celebration of it's demonic and also where does it, where does the inspiration because i and i have often thought about this in in regards to like the rule 34 thing to where i'm like okay if that's the case like who who like what is driving the inspiration and the motivation of individuals pr to produce this it can't be money because i think at this point most porn is like can be consumed for free by most people so it's like I've often thought about like, where is all of the impetus for this creation of all of this coming from? And the only thing that I can think is, it's gotta be demonic in nature. It's demonic in nature. It's it, gotta be demonic in nature. Iconography is the devil's iconography. Yes. Mm, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Well, and not only that, but like you- I can see that. I have no choice. It's a little bit like with the alphabet soup thing is like, where does it stop? And unfortunately there is no stop. So if you if you secede to the fact that, OK, I'm going to look at porn and I'm not going to be ashamed of it. So then the next step is, OK, so what feels good? What is if I'm following a feeling? What is 
okay, turns out my fetish is X, Y, and Z. So then like, I have no choice, but to just keep going. There is no stop because now my, my small G God is pleasure. Which in by my the way, G yes. God, which, which by the way, also begins to show you literally how demonic in nature it is. Because remember something, the demons are not static, by the way. They're growing, increasing in their, in their perdition and their wickedness. It, it isn't like, boom, it's stuck. Like they're moving perpetually forward into that. Just like- Well, and, and human beings are, forgive me, Father, and human beings are participating in that. That's, right. That's, so like as they come on, right. then they're participating. Yeah. So that's that's the thing about death being a gift or mortality is a gift because mortality, God, God allowed death to come. God did not create death, but God allowed death to come as a as a mercy to us. And eventually in the advent of his son and the resurrection, it becomes a means now, not just simply as a mercy, but it comes a means by which we grow into you know, really like theosis, because we will, because death cuts us off, right? Death is the means by which our life is not able to be specifically set aside, sanctified for repentance. Because we die, because we will die, because there's a limited space, the, the choice that we are able to experience through the means of repentance this is what brings about real change. But there is there is a qualitative change that happens when we die, where we enter into the eternal life, that that, that ability to repent as we were in the mortal body, it, it's, it's gone. And so you're either moving perpetually towards God and holiness or perpetually away from God into filth. And that's why what Andrew was saying, that's why I had to come up is because it, it, it isn't just a matter of like, yeah, it just keeps growing. My deviance keeps, it's like, yes, it, it, it keeps growing on a much bigger, almost like metaphysical sense, because that's what's happening to the demons. They are growing in their perdition, you, moving further and further into it. Do you understand? You've, quote what unquote, like sign the contract and like the contract's going to like demand more and more and more of you. And it's going to like, they're just kind of further like pull and suck you in. I don't know if I'm saying this. Until, like repentance is the only way it stops. Yeah. And once, and that's another reason why when someone repents, you know, as a Christian, you can't plateau because plateau is, is plateauing is death. You're either moving forward or you're moving backwards. There is no like plateau. Right. And so, because, because it's the nature of where we're dynamic, we're not, there is, there is, we aren't static. Things are either moving forward or backwards, one way or the other. You know? My my baptizing priest said we're on an escalator going the opposite direction. So if we are pausing, we're going back down. So we have to constantly be hiking up. Okay, so we got a, a couple of minutes left, gentlemen. I have an email here, a question uh, that I don't know what this is, but I trust I'm just going in order. And so I didn't pick this question because I thought it was content. Uh, it was just the next one. So as a question about episode 44 from Susan, um, false canonic or keynotic father. I'm sorry. I forgot how to say it. You just said it, but canonic. canonic love was brought up, discussed a little, and then the conversation moved on. Please unpack this more. Canonic, Yeah. For I feel that this is something that pulls many off the path and a place for a huge mind renewal. If we believe what we are doing, it is true canonic love, but it's actually false uh yeah that's that's the question so i think uh, susan is wanting us to touch a little bit more on cano on false canonic love yeah so in that context we were talking about um uh, specifically you know it was kind of speculating or you know diving into this experience that i've had with like um uh, like people that struggle with like narcissism and bbd and things like that but um so it's a great way to understand it is like codependency, let's say perhaps um, on like a real light level, but as those who are familiar with that, either in a kind of clinical sense or, or experientially, there's levels to that and it can get really bad really quick. Um, and What's a light, a light definition of codependency? I know what it is because well, I am a class, uh, 
from an experiential level, codependency is basically like you need the way it manifested in me was that I need someone else's chaos to give me purpose. I needed a, I needed a train wreck in my life to constantly be fixing and working on it so that um, I don't know what I was avoiding or whatever, but it's basically this need that I need to leech on to someone, latch on to someone who is continually sucking my energy, who's like continually um, like making my life worse for being there, but I'm addicted to that pattern. I can't get out of it. So uh, the opposite of that is cutting it off and saying, no, you need to start working on yourself and uh, I'll pray for you. I love you, but I'm not doing this anymore. So um, that that's my experiential. I'm, I'm maybe there's a more clinical, dry, um, more relatable uh, definition, but that's that's my experience. I mean, that's great for the relatable and that and that that's great because you could see where that could just go really off the rails real quick, you know. Um, and so the way it works, though, is that in this context of trying to get to a place where the kind of theological language is applied to it it really, it, it begins to seduce someone into this false sense of, because it, it's in us, especially if you're Christian, it's, it's in us as human beings to want to experience this giving of self for the quote unquote salvation of someone else, to fix someone, to help them, right? But the problem with that is obviously is like, we can't do that in of ourselves, right? And so what it, what it, can, what it does, is it triggers a perverted um, false sense of that kind of Christ-like experience where you're giving of yourself and it, and it puts you in this, this sense of purpose. Sometimes even like for like a lot of men who are suffering from codependency, they feel like the hero. They feel like, you know, they're the one who is, um, again, like in this Christ-like place of helping this person. Um, but you're not really serving this person. You're serving like their chaos. You're serving their sickness, right? And you're facilitating it. And it's, and it's perverse and it's inverted because when Christ in his canonic work, what he does is he, I mean, he does so much, <laughs> but he's, he's able, you know, he tramples down death by death. He's, he's able to not simply make the bridge that no one else could make, but he, he also shows us where the bridge is, how to cross it, and he helps walk us over it too. He does the whole thing in his canonic experience of becoming, emptying himself of, of his divinity in such a way that he is one of us, right? He's, he's, he is fully man while still being fully God, but that divesting of, of himself and coming as a servant and dying and being humiliated and all those things, it's life-giving, right? It doesn't, it doesn't, the death of Christ and his canonic work as God did not facilitate further entropy and division. What it is, it, it put a stop to it. So at a certain point, he knows when to stop and say, this is getting unhealthy. I have to like step back. Like, I'm not going to feed your chaos anymore. Yeah, what, what he does is he shows, he, he, sh he shows us ourselves as we should be. Not, not an individualistic sense, right? He doesn't necessarily, sh like he doesn't show Cyprian, Cyprian as he should be. He shows, he shows Cyprian what it means to be a human being perfect. And then now Cyprian kind of fits himself in there. So it's like Christ takes on humanity the and human nature, not the personhood, like, because Cyprian has a personhood that's particular to Andrew, which is, right? But you guys share in a nature. Are you following me at all, yes, right? Yes. So he takes on that. He takes on human nature, right? And this emptying of himself, this emptying of himself is a work in which allows him to take on human nature in such a way that we now look to uh, to what we are in him and say like, oh, there's hope, okay. right? The false kenosis doesn't do that. Does it? It actually facilitates a despair. Yes. Right. Yes. Because because it mimics that feeling of 
I'm giving myself, right? That's as far as it goes. I'm giving myself. So therefore I'm a hero, you know, it feels good. It's altruistic. You shouldn't saying it's all those things, right? That's why people get stuck in those. I, I can fix her. I know I can. I can fix him. I know I can, right? But the thing is, is like the key word is I. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can fix him. I know I can. And we get stuck in this loop, right? Christ ends the loop. Christ ends all the loops. This isn't the only loop he ends. He also ends the loop of violence, right? He ends the loop of competition. He ends the loop of pride. Like, like every loop that we get caught in, every cycle, every but, sin cycle and sin loop. No, 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 no. We're done with that. We're done with that. Like, I can stop yeah, that. But, but, it, but it isn't just like, dad, like, shut up. I'm done with you. Go to your room. But I'm not going to, like, it's like, no, I'm, I'm stopping you from hitting yourself and crying. And I'm, let me explain to you what went wrong. Here's something to help you to get through it. Okay. <clears throat> now you do it. Mm -hmm. Right. And he, in, he, in, he endeavors in this with us. And that's again, where the canonic, that false canonic begins to mimic it. Because the thing about codependency, this false canonic experience is it goes on. It's a cycle. Yes. And like, well, this time it's going to be different or next time or like, if I can just get him to this place, I can just get him to this place. And Christ does that with us. But the difference is Christ is wisdom. And Christ knows there's a point where his, the spirit of God will not strive with men always. There's a point where he, there is a point where, he, where something shifts. We don't have that, right? So it can only be experienced in the life of Christ. And so this false canonic experience it really it, it it the reason why it becomes so addictive to people because it does give this false sense of a kind of like savior christ-like experience sure. but it's it's not it's not the same thing it My, doesn't have the power to heal right it only has the power to engage and to facilitate connection but not all connection is good no. by the way so it facilitates connection it facilitates engagement but it can't facilitate transformation and healing and, and, and repentance, you know. My, bo my boss has the best, ex uh, the best definition of um, enabling, but to some degree codependency as well, because there's a giant Venn diagram that there's a huge overlap there. Um, but he, he calls it uninformed love. Mm -hmm. And I agree with that completely. That's good. Yeah, yeah that's it's good. very good because it is theoretically, quote unquote, well, flip it, flip it. That's well, let, let's just real quick because I think this is great. Great question, by the way. Um, Susan. 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 Yeah. Um, I might write something about this, but not that anyone cares. Um, but if you flip it, I care. If if you flip it, it makes a lot more sense. It, it it proves the point, right? So uninformed love, right? If you flip it, Christ's love is absolutely like it, it is the informed love. Because Christ is aware of every facet, every aspect. There isn't anything that he, he, he not only can't touch, but won't touch. Yeah. That, that's why we're kind of getting back to what we talked about last week is the big problem with people, like you're speaking as a spiritual father, the big problem I see with everyone across the board, if, if there's a problem is they're, they're not all the way in. You know what I mean? They have their whatever as an idol whether it's their race, their sexual practice, mm. their gluttony, you know, their victim, you know, uh, mentality, whatever, whatever it is, you got this thing as, an, as and it's keeping you from being all in with Christ and the church. That's always the problem. Because when you go all in, that's where you find healing. And, and, you know, I was telling something to a young man today. God bless him, man. This was, this was, I had a great moment today with one of my spiritual children, a young man. He had confession. We talked and it was just so good. And I was so glad to tell him, like, you know what? What you're doing is good. Like, I like encouraging people. And I told mm -hmm. him, you know what? The Christian life isn't always about having some drama and some thing that I can't fix. And, and I told him, you don't have to do that. You don't have to fall in the space where it's like, is there something wrong with me because I don't have some major crisis? 
No. Like, you can live a life of joy and hope and growth and wisdom and all these things. Your life should not be like, if you're in a place of healing, wonderful. The church is the hospital. Christ is the great physician. But he doesn't want, to, he doesn't want you to stay there. The, the church isn't some eternal therapy session. Like there is a, there, come, there will come a point where Christ says, pick up your mat and walk. Yeah. Don't you want to walk? Yeah. Okay. That's an easy $5 you're making a day on the side of the road. But let me tell you something better, better to make three fifty from working than $5 landing your wallet. I'm just, I'm just telling you, you know what I mean? So if that's where you're at, God bless you. But like, you don't got to stay there. And if you want to stay there, that's part of where this codependency thing, that's where people get stuck in that loop, right? Yeah. But Christ wants to raise us up, right? And so it can be done. And that's what we want. We want to live, we want to get to the point where we have accepted God's healing. We have accepted God's forgiveness through repentance and now we're working for him like like don't you want to work for him don't yeah. you want to bring people to the faith don't you want to experience god's grace don't you want to you know grow in your love of god and your fellow man well you can't do that if, if it's constantly about you and, con and and again if there's real problems of course god bless you like that's right but i'm just saying like it doesn't have to stay there forever. And that's part, that's one of the things I wish people would really want to embrace more is to be like, because really, here's the most frustrating thing. So much of, so much of what's going on in our lives, it's there because we allow it to be. It's a cycle of misery. It's Just, much more you, comfortable. Yes, if you make that firm, the devil lies to people. And if that's, that's why, I harp so much on the identity thing because people think, well, I'm always a victim. Well, this was done to me. Well, it's like, you know what? So what? Well, yeah. Okay. I don't want to be, you know, it's like, yes, but that's not all that you are. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to be like, suck it up, buttercup. It's like, sometimes you say that, but like, okay, that's not all that you are. What is next? Don't you want there to be something next? And sometimes, it, sorry, Father. I mean, sometimes people don't. Like, I know I didn't for a long time. It's uncomfortable. Or, or they or they don't know. They've never even thought about it. They've yeah. never even considered that there could be right. a next. So that, and, and that's what I'm trying to, that's what I try to do as a priest is to give people a vision. But I'm a bad priest. And so that's often mistaken as me being mean or me being like whatever. But really, I'm just trying to get people to be like, because I do get frustrated because I believe in people more than they do themselves. Amen. That's the thing. Amen. So, so when I get frustrated, it's just like, it's not, I'm not frustrated because it's like, I want to go get a sandwich. Like you're taking my time. I'm frustrated because I'm like, look, every man is a liar. You're baptized you're communing, you're, you're a Christian, I know you have the power because God's giving, God's not a liar. But that, that part of you resolving yourself and you saying, even if it kills me, I'm not going to do that again. Right? And it, it can be done. Yeah. It can be, it can be done. You know what I mean? Father, would you equate your frustration a little bit to at the beginning of the episode when Christ was, oh, how long have I been with you? Mm -hmm. Like a little bit, like, a little come bit. on. Like, come on, like a little bit. And, and, and it's not that I'm like in the place of Christ, but it's just like, you know, I was, I was thinking about this today because it was the gospel. It was like, you know, my secret power, the key to my success spiritually is he has been forgiven much, loves much. That's my secret. I've been forgiven much. And so like, I've never forget it. Right. And so that's why I can be frustrated. And I'm like, come on, I know you, I, come on. Come on, just make the resolve, right? Because I've made the resolve. Am I perfect all the time? No. But see, that's the weird thing about the resolve. The resolve, when it's done right, it doesn't leave you in this place if you think you're perfect. The resolve makes you be like, even if I fall, I'm going to get up. Yeah. The resolve is, you know what? 
if I, okay, like, man, today I saw this great clip from Clarence Thomas, whatever, and I'd never seen this before. And it was him during his hearings to be nominated to Supreme Court Justice. It's wild, man. He's like, there's this one, it's like a movie. The one guy, he's like, uh, so there's a rumor that you are considering removing yourself from the nomination process. And Clarence Thomas, he goes like, I'd rather die. And then I was like, what? You know, like, he's like, I would rather die than remove myself from the process. So, and it says something else. And, then, and Clarence Thomas, he's like, I'm not saying about being a Supreme Court judge. I'm saying that I would rather die than remove myself from the process. He's like, I've dealt with bullies my whole life. And he starts looking at all the politicians on the table. He's like, you, like, go ahead and kill me. But I would rather die. And I, and I go like, see, that's it. See, to me, I'm like, that's, that's the dignity of being a man, of being a human being, of being able to say like, what I am in regards of holding my integrity, right? That, see, that's the proper way, like whatever, whatever Maroney is stoking in someone, whatever Trump stoked in someone, that's the way to kind of like take that and to wield it in a Christian way is, I would rather die then capitulate to your lunacy or capitulate to your perversion. You know what I'm saying? He that said he set his face toward Jerusalem. You set your face like a flint towards Jerusalem. That's yeah. what it looks like. That's what our, you know, I hope someone, you know, I hope someone holds holds out for that because that's maybe some of the nugget that they're looking for. But like that's what it looks like. You know what I mean? You have that resolve. And that resolve is an abstract. You say to yourself, I am an Orthodox Christian. I, I worship the living God, not an abstraction, not a mythological projection, not an anthropological manifestation of my desires for a moral life or a politically charged um, system that will empower me and my, my social class. No, I believe in the living God who became man and who was crucified. You go to the creed, right? And then you say, in following him, I find my being. I find who I am, right? And I would rather die than lose that. That's what this looks like. So, oh, well, that, amen. Amen. Uh, getting too into it, it in a in a in a life that's really confusing, and you oftentimes don't really know what to stand up for. That moment's really empowering because I've had that moment of like, no, I absolutely will not bow down to this. Like, I can't do it. And luckily I was in a situation where the stakes weren't really that high, but it was nice still to be like, no, I, I absolutely will not agree with you on this subject. Like, it's just, it's nice knowing that like, and it's not because it's my opinion. I'm not, I'm not like grabbing out of my intellect here, an opinion that I have formulated. No, I'm saying it because this, this goes against the teachings of the church. Yeah. Like father, you said it a long time ago. I don't want my opinions anymore. Right. Like I want the teachings of the Christ. Like I want Christ. So honestly, I, I mean, it's not abstraction. What it really looks like is if someone presents you something that moves you to the left, whether that is the left in the political spectrum or whether it's the left in regards of like, you know, the passions, you know, gluttony or some sort of sexual sin, you know, you're lying. You're like, I would rather die than, you know, cheat on my husband, you know, and, and, and shame him right? I would rather die than, than, you know, make some sort of concession for the murder of unborn children. Okay, great. But it goes the other way too. You know, I would rather die than capitulate to fear and to my temptation of wanting to have power over others and consent to murdering people just because they're caught in their passion. I would yeah. rather die than be turned into an atrocious murderer myself. Yes, it, it's the same thing, right? And then if there's something where you're not, where you don't know, then here's the middle. You go like, I don't really know, but I, I'm gonna humble myself, and I'm and I and I know that I need to pray, seek spiritual counsel and confession, and I'll get the answer if I don't know it. But I but I'm able to say I don't know right now. I don't, you know what I mean? If I honestly don't know, I don't have to lie. That's my right? favorite response to something. I don't know. It's like it's one of my favorites. Because I don't know. I have no idea. But it's out there somewhere. I just don't know it. Mm -hmm. So, all right, gentlemen, I, I have to go to bed. It's I got a day tomorrow and 
it's late here in the states so um cyprian did you did you have something you look okay. like you had something all right you don't know just no nope all, all right good. um so uh um we have the playlist on spotify i will uh add vici is that who you talked about? Cyprian? Avicii, A V I C I I. Add a couple of their songs to the. And Ed Sheeran too, right? Uh, oh no! Please don't do that, Ed Sheeran. <laughs> yeah. And Lizard. And Lizard. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so we have uh, the music that's good. We talked about it's on a uh Royal Path Spotify playlist. Um, there's the merch store, which is RoyalPath.net. I don't. No, the royal path, royal path dot store. Dot store. All proceeds go to church. So we're not. Yeah. I'm not seeing a dime off this. Um, and then um, felt like we were plugging something. Oh, please keep the questions coming. Again, I have to emphasize. I am not answering these. I'm not emailing you back. Maybe I will email you to let you know I got them. But the the plan is, I think, moving forward a little bit, is to actually try to answer some of these on air. And not like type it back because I think these are really good questions and they generally the two we've done so far great questions have been mm -hmm. have been great mm -hmm. questions that have led I to agree. a very good conversation afterwards I agree so um keep them coming eventually we will get through them um I know that Susan I think you sent yours quite a while ago and that's probably the pace you should be expecting is wait a couple months and we'll get to it unless we decide to bang out like four or five of them in one episode which that could always happen so we'll see what happens um, thank you, everyone, and uh, thank you for having a good night. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.